When Jesus is on the cross, many Christians don't realize there are five major problems that occurred during that period. And they should know these. As I say, I teach a kind of Sunday school in reverse, the things they should have heard. Let me go through these one at a time. First thing is this. When Jesus is on, there, on the cross, he says, Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And I ask, well, who's he, who's he talking to? They say, well, the Christians say, oh, he's talking to God. I say, wait a minute, I thought he was God. They say, yes, he is God. I say, wait, you got God down here talking to God out there someplace. That's God talking to God. That's two gods. And of course, if you throw in the Holy Ghost, you've got three gods. You wouldn't believe the mental gyrations that they go through to get out of this mess. The bottom, they try to say it's a mystery. You don't have to understand it. You can't understand it. It's just a mystery. There's no mystery to it. It's a contradiction. I don't care if they believe... <laughs> I don't care if they believe one God, two gods, 20 gods, 100 gods. All I'm saying is you can't believe in all of them simultaneously. If you believe in one, you can't believe in three. If you believe in three, you can't believe in one. And since they believe that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are all three gods, therefore they are believing in three gods. Therefore, Christianity is not a monotheistic religion. It's a tritheistic religion. Judaism and Islam are monotheistic religions. Christianity is not. Second problem. When Jesus is on the cross, he said, this is while he's dying here, he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, stop and think. How could those be the words of a man who's voluntarily dying for your sins? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Those are the words of a man that think of a hundred places he'd rather be. Another problem with that same verse is, when he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The obvious question is, how can he be our Savior? He can't even save himself. Another thing that the Christians don't seem to think about. A fourth problem is, what or who died on the cross? If a man died, then you have nothing because the death of a man couldn't save anybody. On the other hand, if God died, then you have an impossibility. So the question becomes, what died on the cross? If it's the death of a man, it's worthless. If it's the death of a God, you have an impossibility. That's a fourth problem. And the fifth problem is Jesus dying on the cross for us. It may be a magnanimous act, it may be a generous act, but it has nothing to do with justice. Why does it have nothing to do with justice? Because he didn't commit the crime. He didn't do the act. That makes about as much sense as if I were, after I'd killed 100 people, being put in the electric chair, and just before I sit in the chair, my dad steps forward and says, I'll sit in the chair for him. Now, do you know of any judge in the entire United States that accept that arrangement? I don't. Why? Because I did that crime, not my father. You don't punish A for what B did. And yet that's what's occurring. We get out of the problem that Adam created, which is an injustice, by Jesus dying on the cross, which is another injustice. So what you have, in effect, is two wrongs do make a right, according to Christianity. You know, we're always told that two wrongs don't make a right. The fundamental belief of their religion is that two wrongs do make a right. 